For our wedding anniversary, we went camping at Cumberland Island National Seashore on the east coast of the Florida Georgia border. This long and skinny barrier island is sandwiched between the Atlantic Ocean on one side and a river on the other. It's full of hiking trails that we shared with all sorts of wildlife, and not too many other people. To get there, we booked passage on a small ferry, which we shared with a few interesting characters. The ride was relatively uneventful and took about 45 minutes. We used that downtime to prepare a fancy breakfast and have some coffee. Oh, and the boat was equipped with a toilet, but apparently you're not supposed to drink from it, so make sure you bring some water. We stayed at Sea Camp, which is one of four campsites run by the National Park Service on the island. The site itself had everything you'd expect. A fire ring, a picnic table, a bear box to keep your food away from raccoons. But honestly, the coolest part of all was our roof. No, not the roof of our tent. This super unique tree canopy constantly danced in the breeze, which ended up sounding sort of like the ocean as we slept. It was a really unique experience. The amenities of the campground weren't exactly five star though. We brought our own cooking equipment and food, and we could wash dishes at the community sink and fill our water bottles at the fountain, but the bathrooms were kind of run down. Even though they do have electricity, the showers don't have hot water, which isn't exactly ideal in November weather. Apparently they're in the process of building a new bathhouse before 2023, but when I asked the guy working on it if they were going to install a water heater, he said probably not. Oh, and make sure you bring a garbage bag of your own, because there are no public trash cans on the entire island, not even in the bathrooms. On the plus side, as the name implies, Sea Camp is only a short walk from the ocean, and overall, it was still a nice place to stay, even when a wild horse trampled through at full speed one time. When we set out to explore a little, we took the 4.5 mile South End Loop Walk, which covers sections of both the east and west coasts of the island. We started on the Atlantic side, heading through the dunes toward the ocean, and the beach was pretty even on a cloudy day. Some weird stuff had washed up on the coast following Hurricanes Ian and Nicole though. If you like souvenirs, you're actually allowed to take shells from this beach home with you, which is kind of unusual for places run by the strict National Park Service. As we headed inland to cross to the other side of the island, the landscape turned to marshes and estuaries, which we were familiar with as Floridians. We crossed the boardwalks and gazed up at some gigantic trees before running into the Dungeness Ruins, which are remains of a mansion that was built by Thomas Carnegie in 1884 and burned down in the 1950s. Today, it remains a good place to stop and have a snack. From that point on, we started seeing a lot of wildlife. Tons of wild horses were chilling in random fields, without many people around to bother them. We saw butterflies, we hung out with an armadillo, who didn't seem to care that we existed at all, and we witnessed some hermit crabs battling each other in shallow puddles. The last stretch of our walk was along the river side of the island, and it was probably the most beautiful. The beaches on this side were more forested, combining the two prettiest features of the park, the water and the trees. We sat and watched the sunset and the tide go out as the temperature began to rapidly drop. That brought us back to our campsite in perfect time to start a fire, warm up, and do some more of our famous fine dining. We had fun on this trip, but on the way home we were talking about the cost relative to our typical adventures. In 24 hours, we spent over $100 including the ferry ride, compared to our regular cost of $30 to $50 a night. If you want to learn more about how we usually travel super cheaply without having to pay for a campsite or sleep in a tent, check out the travel tips section of our blog at tripofalifestyle.com. If you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe or follow along on your favorite social media platform.